Hey everyone, today we're going to be checking out some beaver swamps along this abandoned railway. This is usually a snowmobile trail in the winter time, but this time it's just a walking and biking trail. There's no ATVs or dirt bikes allowed in the summertime for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Maybe they're worried about it damaging their old rail bed. This train track was torn up in the mid-1920s, but yet most of the drainage ditches, culverts, are still in perfect condition. There used to be a bunch of iron trestles, but those were all taken out. When we get to that point, we're going to be having to cross a river. Uh, the river's pretty low this year. It's been a very dry year, so that probably won't even get my boots wet crossing it. We'll see what happens when we get to it. That might be why this trail is not typically open to motor vehicles or motorsports in the summer because a snowmobile could probably cross the frozen river. Oh wow, there's a moose up there ahead of us. Oh, he's turning back to look. That's pretty cool. It was literally just in the beaver swamp to our left and it just went plowing right out into the trail when it heard me coming. It mustn't have known where I was coming from, but take a look at the swamp. You can see all the petrified dead trees sticking out of the water. The swamp is not that old. This train track is the perfect dam and opportunity for the, build, the beavers to build their swamp. All they had to do is plug the culvert. The culvert is up here where that moose is staring at us. I want to not get too close to it. Because Moose may be pretty angry. He's way down there. And good, he's peacefully still walking away. But he keeps stopping to turn at us. It's okay, we don't have to go much further. He should be long gone by the time we go down there. The culvert is somewhere around here. Nice bench. Oh, he's looking at us again. He's looking at us again. Oh, uh, it's been a minute later. I can still see the moose down there. Very, very, very far in the distance. Can you see him way down there? I'm now zoomed in 14 times and you can barely see him. Still walking away. We'll go down there in a little bit. By then he'll probably have cleared the trail. So we're looking at the area and it looks like the parks department has thought this through pretty well. See, it's all worn down from the snowmobiler. But you see, this is the overflow for the pond. It mustn't have a lot feeding it because that's tiny. This is a tiny little overpass made out of wood and it's being fed by that six inch sewage line right here. It's a six inch sewage pipe with a 45 degree angle at the end of it just pulling water in. It's actually a very simple design. Just goes right in, no water falling, no noise to alert the beavers. These tiny little islands, they're reddish, they're so beautiful. I don't see any beaver lodges around. I don't see any active chew marks. They may have been relocated. So unfortunately, it looks like whatever culvert the train company had a hundred years ago isn't around anymore. You see across the way, that big clearing, see how all the trees are torn down right there? Somebody's probably planning on building a house right there, overlooking the swamp. That's why the trees are all torn down. Because if you look right here to the left, there is a house right there. They don't have much of a clearing coming down here. Is that moose still down there? I don't see it, but I have to be cautious. We may run into it again. All right, this is pretty cool to show everyone. 
right here, you see this little groove. It's a groove there because the beavers have been coming in and out of there for such a long time. It doesn't look very recent. Definitely in the past year or six months, not very recently. They may have been trapped because it was probably at risk of washing the trail out. And you see coming down the other side how worn out it is. That's from many, many animal crossings. And I can also see here on the ground, freshly disturbed, there's a moose tracks, the one we just saw running away. That's pretty cool, look at that old railroad sign. Somebody may have just put that wood there as a decoration, but that's an actual train rail sticking out of the ground. We just came across a tiny little street crossing, so it's possible the moose may have turned down one of these other ways. I don't see the moose around anywhere. Oh, here's a cute little bridge. Oh, a squirrel. There's a good amount of water underneath this. That's all definitely original, that granite block work down there. Bridge was definitely way after just for the cabins down here. But I bet you the moose kept going straight. Just how far down there I was zoomed in. So I still got to be very cautious. There's like a 98% chance or so that it would do nothing. But sometimes you might get one with an attitude that might just pop out at any moment. And it's again very rare. Now you see not many people use this part of it at all in the summertime. It's pretty grown in. I'm hoping we can even follow it. I'm not going to show any of these houses, but it's almost uncomfortably close how close this trail is. Now you see this has all been regraded. See I'm having, I'm having to go up this hill. Now we're back onto the nice flat train tracks, leaving that little neighborhood. This is still definitely an active beaver trail. See this? Coming right up out of here across so maybe we'll be able to see beavers around here here's the exiting end of one of the culvert pipes see lots of iron oxidizing bacteria coming out of it into this big swamp now we're going to go down on the other side and try to find the entrance of that see if it has any type of blockages this looks like the best way down you can see this is obviously a trail i see lots of deer tracks that are pretty fresh Beavers also probably use it. There's a fresh cut beaver tree, probably in the past couple weeks. See, it's already got a chance to start growing back. Lots of frogs jumping in. So this has got to be the culvert right here. See how you got the nice shoreline? And then it boops out where I am. This is a beaver dam right here, years in the making. That culvert's probably right down inside here. Not causing any problems right now. This swamp is extremely low, look at this. Got a good 15 feet of elevation back up to the train tracks. Look over here, that's a gigantic beaver lodge. This place is definitely active. All right, we just crossed our first main road. Back down into the forest. You can see since the train track was graded, they really raised up the roads. Road probably wasn't even here 100 years ago. Ah, oh, there's a blockage here, what is this? So I can see the scar of the tree, the train tracks definitely still went straight. Culvert, a lot of moles digging it up. So this is blocked off. It looks like it's turned into swamp. I wonder if that's where the river is and where the train bridge would have been. All right, everybody, I just came out to a main road. I'm gonna see if I can continue, but it appears it's 
going along the river now. It doesn't look like it's going to cross. Since that iron bridge is no longer there, it looks like they've been letting it grow in for a few decades. Here's a few of the trail groomers for the winter time and a bunch of extra culverts. Those culverts actually look like they were pulled out, used, but in good condition. So here we come up to a snowmobile bridge parallel with the roadway. This is the same river that that first iron bridge was supposed to go over. It's pretty dried up for the year. Not a lot flowing, but you can see it's got a lot of potential. Crystal clear water. A lot of lichen on this bridge. Water levels are low, that's why I haven't been doing any non-essential beaver removals such as ones on this trail. Only roads that matter. Not trails this year. It's still very dry out. I just crossed the main road to check out the culvert. Lots of iron oxidizing bacteria but no blockage. I'm happy to see there's still water here trickling. Most of the streams in the area that are this small have just completely dried up. All right, so back on the other side of the road, the culvert pipe comes out right here. Now let's continue. All right, everybody, we just stopped here because I can hear a ton of water on that side, but yet this side, it's going in so gradually underneath the snowmobile bridge. The culvert starts underneath this snowmobile bridge somewhere. Because right now you see the snowmobile trail in the winter time just goes on the edge of the road here through another neighborhood. So we're gonna try to get down here and see if there's a blockage. This stream is actually not flowing that badly. Easy enough access. Animals come down here a lot. It's all pushed over. There's kind of a trail already made. This stream is also pretty low. Wow, not the culvert I expected. There's no blockage. I expected there to be a smaller pipe. Wow, this culvert is prepared for this thing to fill up with feet just flooding the whole area. Look at this. This is pretty awesome. I didn't expect to find something this big. Water's getting pretty deep in my boots. I'll hop up onto this rock. Ah, this is very nice. Half of the snowmobile bridge is being held up by the culvert itself. Oh, tripod's a bit too tall to make it in here comfortably. I'm gonna duck. Look at all this sand that the stream has deposited in here during times of high flow. See, the bottom of the culvert has baffles. This is actually the first time I've seen this sort of baffle outside of Pennsylvania. Very nice. Because if these baffles weren't here, this water would be going down here at full speed. That wouldn't work very well, now would it? It would destroy the bank down there. Because you see how the culvert drops? It's too much elevation too fast. Now, it looks like a very violent storm broke one of the baffles. Yes, it did. See right here at the end where these holes are? That's where that baffle came from. See it? It just got completely smashed off. Whether it was done by a massive rock, a gigantic tree floating through here, or it could have been as simple as it got very cold and the ice pried it off. Now we have a bit of a climb right here. Pretty steep retaining wall. Oh, there's a good handhold there. I've noticed in the past year the mole populations going way up. You see 
lots more of their tunnels than he used to previous years. Ah, this guardrail is so hot. Now we're going to continue. Unfortunately, see how there's a cul-de-sac down here? It looks like this whole area is going to be developed shortly, meaning bye-bye forest. All right, here's the end of the neighborhood, and it looks like good news. This area can't really be developed, even though it looks like they were going to. See, the road looks like at some point it was just going to continue. See how it's really wide, like a two-lane road. It's graded. It's got culverts installed, but it looks like it was saved. There's a sign here saying, or there was a sign back there before I left the pavement saying this is owned by the New Hampshire Society to Protect Forests. And it says bicycles are allowed here, dogs, hiking, horses. You're allowed to go hunting here. You're allowed to collect edible plants. And it says that, yeah, you can even go snowmobiling here. You just can't use motor vehicles here because it would destroy the area after a while. The chain's a lot heavier than it looks like with one hand. So let's continue. I don't think this is the railway bed anymore. Looking at the satellite, there's a scar probably a quarter mile in the woods there. So we're running parallel with it. But it's completely impassable unless you are bushwhacking, which would probably take a whole day to get down a mile of it. It's very dense. A little bit further down this road, we can see a gigantic tank culvert. Look at that. Nice. Typically these tanks have been brought out here from old gas stations, old fuel tanks to run logging equipment when you find them out in the woods. But then, a lot of times when you see that they're riveted like this, that's just how they plain made culverts 100 years ago, 150 years ago. They built them like this with pride, pounding every, pounding every hot rivet in one by one. And look what it has to show for itself. It's still here and it's pretty strong. It'll probably still be here in another century. All right, so we're gonna go this way first where the snowmobiles aren't allowed because that actually crosses the scar where the train tracks were. And then we'll continue this way since this way is a dead end in about a half a mile. All right, so even at this point, the train tracks are still not passable. This is where the train tracks were. This is what this scar is. So if I ride the bike right in here I can't go more than what you're seeing it's just not going to work somebody dumped a bunch of tires out here not too long ago or they were moved these other sets were there a while uh, you can see I just simply can't go any further and the reason being that this wasn't a continuous recreation trails probably because some people own parts of the train tracks because you see when the train company went out of business this stuff was all abandoned but then there was an opportunity for homeowners to purchase this thin strip of land going through their property so they could just own the entire thing not just both sides and after that happened is when they started making these into recreational trails so that's why it keeps cutting on and off. But now that this whole area was saved from being cut down, we're definitely allowed down this part. It's just not passable. Maybe that could be a good bushwhack for the winter time. All right, everybody. So this area all goes into dead ends eventually. Right here is a plot where they were gonna build a house but the land is now protected. So right here, I can tell from satellite images, these scars right here are from the last time it was logged. I have two choices. I can go 10 miles back to where I parked, or 
I can bushwhack here about 500 feet to a main road and then I can ride like half a mile. I think I'm gonna take this or at least try it. I don't think the forest is too dense. All right, I think the hardest part is behind me. I'm now one third of the way through the bushwhack. I think that was the worst part, very dense. Now that I'm into the forest, it's pretty open. Not much sun shines below these trees, so it's pretty open. Uh, did I did I mention to you guys that after the bushwhack, before I get to the road, I actually have to cross a river? If I didn't have the bike with me or my backpack full of gear, I would have been through this long ago. It's not easy when you're carrying a bunch of stuff that's catching on every little branch. All right, everybody, this area of forest probably wasn't logged as recently as that. Since there's newer laws, you're not allowed to log so close to a river. At first I was like, wow, the loggers don't like this kind of tree, just like me. It's basically garbage. You can't make lumber out of it. You can't burn it. The BTU value is too low. If you stack it as firewood, it literally rots before it seasons. But no, 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 this wasn't the loggers. Look how it comes into a point. It's not as easy to see there as it is to see over here. That was done by beavers. Beavers are the ones who cut down all these trees you see laying on the ground. Just reached the edge of the riverbed. Right here. It's running very low. The river's only running at about 1.4 feet. Average is around three. And this river can potentially, during flood season, get well over 11 feet. Which, when it gets to 11 feet, low-lying land next to the river typically floods. All right, you can see where I just came out of the forest. It's a good thing the water's so low. There's actually a chance I might get across without flooding my boots. But then again, I think I'm just going to go for it and walk right across. It's very hot out. Having wet boots will actually keep my body pretty cool. So now I'm gonna pick the bike up so nothing important gets all rusty. I already feel a little bit of water in my boots. These are old boots. They probably already have a hole in them. I wear my rubber boots out. Usually in five or six months, go through about two pairs a year. I just flooded them, so, oh well. Just gonna start going right across. The main road's right there. You'll probably see while I'm going across, a couple of vehicles go by. Rocks are slippery. And holding the bicycle and camera, I can't really balance too well. It's a good thing I'm not doing it in the end of summer. The end of summer, all these rocks will be slimy, even more slippery with stringy algae. All right, we made it. So I guess that's the end of our adventure today. Hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day. And while in the area, we're checking out Long Pond's new dam structure here in Benton, New Hampshire. The wind actually just pushed a little new flow over. It's almost completely dried up. This is not unusual for the summertime. It always gets low, but this is the lowest I've ever seen the place. Oh, I hear a frog down there barking in the little bit of leaking from the discharge. Let's go see that frog. Right here, 
We got some very healthy algae and slime. That's a little bit of leaking water coming through the earth dam. Seeing a couple tiny little fish in here. Don't see the frog. It's probably hiding. No, that was not condensation. It's just heating up like a greenhouse. Here's the spillway. You can see the other pipe was kind of rotting out on the bottom, so they put a sleeve with flowable concrete. Driest I've ever seen it down here. Here's that little bit of water that just spilled when the wind pushed. Just made a little puddle and it did it again. And over here is the only trickle remaining showing that the dam is not perfectly straight, but it's not far off. It's probably within quarter inch accuracy if it's able to still go there. Right here, this is flowing so little. It's more of an ooze. Downstream is very dried out. All the creatures here are probably going to become food soon for birds. They're already kind of trapped in a lot of these pools. These fish can't go anywhere. Oh wow, there's a ton of fish trapped in these pools. I bet this water's warm. Yeah, that's pretty warm. Riverbed's pretty dried up. There's a little tiny frog, probably born this year. Now, that's a benefit to these fish being trapped, because as the water dries up, they're going to be concentrated into tiny little puddles. Frog can easily get a meal and fatten up. Walking downstream for the first time, I've never been down here. Usually, it's more overgrown, and the water's higher, so I never thought to look down here. These pools are very nice, a lot of good algae growing, but there's almost completely no trickle. You can see by the debris and this, the way this tree's pushed, this thing, especially during the spring thaw, after a rainy season, it floods here a lot. Coming up to the swamp or wetland, not really sure what it is yet. It might just be a wetland. From far away, I could just see the opening where it looked like a pond was there. This recently dried up. That hasn't been out of the water too long. A lot of this moss is very resilient. It can just go into a suspended animation for a long time. Like this, see how it turned black? It can put up with extreme heat to just baking in the sun. But then after just a couple days of being back underwater it'll green right back up look at all this debris just slammed into this log a lot of it's actually beaver debris they didn't build it here but during storms it got washed over that dam because there's a lot of beavers in long pond multiple lodges hey there's another frog right there yeah little frog so yes there is water down here so there's water right here, and probably a beaver dam at the end of this water. See this water, it kind of snakes around through the swamp. A lot of fish in here. Good thing I still got my big high boots on. There's a lot of stinky, nasty gas bubbles here. Over there is actually extremely deep. Right here is becoming kind of muddy. I might get stuck. I'm going to come up into the grass. My big high boots are also really good for walking through grass because see they're light colored. I'd be able to see ticks. It's less likely they'd get onto me. I love how this snakes around. I'm guessing the beaver dam would be over there. If you can see there's like a little clearing in the trees. Just thought I'd do an update on this area today. This is my first time coming here this year.
I can see trails here, whether it be beavers or deer walking through here. Some creatures definitely coming through often. Now this, this trail is definitely beavers going back and forth. See, in and out of the water. Oh, it's gonna snake around again. I better stay on the deer trail. This is the best way to go through fastest. Because this grass grows in uneven clumps. All right, that is definitely where the water's leaving, but that's not the dam. This whole area is so flat, the dam could literally be a half a mile away. All right, we're coming back up. As you guys can see, usually there's a lot more water here. Even in the riverbed, we are noticing that there's a lot of lily pads. They're still growing. The lily pads are actually raised above the water because there's usually typically a good few inches trickling over all these rocks.